I think the answer of the most of the question will come this second lecture by Dr. Badr al Zaharani from Saudi Arabia. He is a consultant, intervention, cardiology, peripheral intervention, structural heart disease, Prince Sultan Cardiac Center. I think it's based on a very practical part. It's called practical decision algorithm. We have a lot of algorithms, and we have recently, I think the last year, have an algorithm selecting which the right tool for the plaque modification in heavily classified vessels. Bad? I don't see the slide. The uh, first slide, please. It's shown here. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. To um, Amar, can you join us? To Amar, I want to thank the organizing committee for their kind uh, invitation. It's really a pleasure to be here. Uh, my talk is going to be a practical algorithm to uh, how to approach uh, heavily calcified vessels. I have no disclosures for my talk. Uh, as you know, uh, procedure complexity is, um, uh, there's a lot of factors that makes the procedure complex. One of them is the, is the presence of calcium, severe tortuosity, high thrombus uh, content and diffuse atherosclerosis uh, burden. And Dr. DiMario spoke about the presence of calcium and uh, the association with worse outcomes. Uh, th uh, we know that uh, uh, cal heavily calcified lesions is more common in men, more than 70 years of age, and 90% um, um, in men and 67% in women. We know that uh, one-third of uh, coronary lesions uh, we could see uh, heavily calcified by angiogra angiography, so angiography is not a good tool. Uh, to, um, uh, to, to find the uh, calcium, the, um, and imaging is the way to go uh, if, uh, if there is a concern about calcified lesion. Um, we know that uh, coronary calcifications are commonly associated with la a large plaque burden, uh, lesion complexity and, and plaque instability and vulnerability, and also uh, high platelet reactivity and thrombicity in patients with uh, lesions with high uh, calcium content. Um, and on those patients that has heavily calcified vessels, usually the, the, they don't achieve, most of them don't, don't get to receive complete revascularization, which is affects the outcomes um, uh, on those patients. Um, patients with heavily calcified vessels, they have a higher rate of stem thrombosis and uh, high also ischemic target lesion failure. And also it increases the technical complexity of the PCI. There is a difficulty in uh, wiring the lesions and also there is difficulty to uh, advance equipment and uh, pre-dilatation and preparation of the lesion is more difficult and also it can affect your stent, uh, deli uh, uh, your stent um, uh, deliverability and also um, it can cause stent fracture. Um, as we know, the coronary angiogram is suboptimal in cal heavily calcified vessels. Um, you could uh, identify calcium only in 38% of patients with, with calcified vessels, 60% for moderate calcification and 85% for severe calcifications. Uh, looking at different imaging modalities uh, and uh, uh, coronary calcification and uh, which one you should use, as we mentioned, angiography in mild to moderate uh, calcified lesion is not um, uh, optimum. Uh, IVUS and OCT uh, is the g good imaging tools to assess uh, uh, calcium burden. Deep calcium IVUS is superior to OCT. Uh, the calcium arch uh, IVUS and uh, uh, OCT uh, uh, could be assessed, um, uh, could assess the uh, calcium arch. The thickness in IVUS uh, cannot be assessed because of the uh, penetration of the ultrasound uh, uh, through the uh, calcium itself. OCT uh, is a good tool to uh, uh, assess the calcium thickness. Uh, in, in terms of longitudinal calcium length, OCT is superior to IVUS. Uh, in terms of uh, virtual histology, IVUS is, uh, is the tool to go uh, com uh, compared to the OCT. Uh, this is an IVUS images uh, showing in A, um, uh, you could see a calcified uh, lesion, you could see in C a 180 degree of uh, calcified lesion and con concentric calcified lesion in D. So um, uh, that you could miss easily by um, uh, coronary angiogram. This is an OCT that tells you the um, uh, measurement of the uh, area of the calcified uh, nodule and also it tells you the length and the, uh, also the uh, arch of the calcium. Uh, in terms of IVUS, it has a 90% sensitivity and 100% uh, specificity to identify calcified plaque. Uh, and, and IVUS also could detect deep layers of calcium because of the penetration is deeper than uh, OCT. In terms of OCT compared with IVUS, uh, OCT has more accurate definition and quantification of the calcified plaque. It's more, it's more accurate than IVUS in identifying calcium area, thickness, length, and 3D-dimensional uh, 3D um, uh, volume of the uh, calcium. 
Um, the Fino and his group came up with a scoring system uh, by using IVIS. Uh, if the calcified arch is more than 180 degrees, you, you give the patient two points, and if, the cal if there is a, a thickness, calcified uh, thickness more than 0.5, you give them one point, and if there's a, the, the longitude and length of the calcium is more than five millimeter, you give them one point. If the patient scored four and above, uh, it predicts uh, the higher risk of stent under expansion, and it can change your decision in terms of the um, uh, debulking strategy. Treatment options, uh, we're going to talk about rotational atherectomy. This is the Rota, uh, Rota Pro, new device, the, the, no, no more pedal anymore. Um, so they could, you could see this is the RPMs you could, uh, that you could set up. This is the console. It comes in different burrs, uh, starting from 1.25, you could go up to 2.5. Up to 1.75 burr, you could use six French uh, guides. Uh, more than that, you have to use seven French. There is two, um, um, uh, oh, one, four, there's two floppy wires, there is two rota uh, wires, the one is the rota floppy and the one is the extra support rota uh, wire that you could use, and it has a body of uh, 0.009 uh, inch. Fundamentals elements of the of optimal rotational atherectomy technique, you use a 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 ratio of the vessel size, uh, I usually start at 150k uh, RPMs. Uh, and you could go higher if needed. Um, you use the picking motion and don't use more than uh, 20 seconds of uh, runs, uh, otherwise the reflow phenomena is, uh, is higher. Avoidance of deceleration, so usually you have someone in the cath lab uh, telling you about the timing and also telling you about the deceleration. If, there's, if, if it's more than 5,000 RPMs, you have to slow down or stop or, um, and repeat it again. So um, this is an angiogram of a heavily calcified LAD. Uh, you could see below the OCT uh, showed this 180 degree of, uh, of calcium. And then in FNG, uh, you could see post-atherectomy uh, uh, and debulking of the um, calcium and cracking of the calcium with successful placement of the um, stent uh, well expanded. Uh, this is an 80 years old lady uh, who came in uh, uh, with, admitted with ACS, uh, she has multiple chronic medical conditions. This is a Korean angiogram. Then you could see heavily calcified left main extending all the way to the LED. Um, she was turned down by surgery given the comorbid conditions and uh, she's old and uh, frail. And uh, you could see the heavily calcified LED there and the severe stenosis extending all the way to the mid LED. You see, see the calcium burden there in the left main extending all the way to the uh, LED. RCA, she has an osteal uh, tight stenosis. So we brought the patient back. Uh, we, I uh, put an impel as a backup. Uh, this is seven French guide. Uh, we placed uh, a rotor floppy wire in the uh, distal LED. We used the 1.5 burr to uh, um, debulk the lesion from the left main, extending all the way to the LED. You could see the picking motion that we're talking about. Um, we, we, uh, we didn't exceed 20 seconds in every uh, single uh, uh, set of uh, rotablation. So we, we debulked the lesion all the way to the mid LED. And this is the, uh, you could see the stent was placed successfully in the mid LED. And then there's another stent extending to the left main. The uh, circ was uh, uh, jailed at the ostium. So we did kissing balloon inflation and final pot. And this is the final result uh, after successful atherectomy all the way to the left main. Uh, in terms of, uh, 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 Randomized trial, uh, the Rotaxis trial uh, randomized patient with heavily calcified lesions into rotational atherectomy versus standard therapy. And um, they randomized about 200 uh, uh, patients, 120 to the rotational atherectomy group and 120 to the standard therapy group with no uh, rotational atherectomy. And they followed them up up to nine months. And this is in the taxis stent era. Uh, what that showed higher strategy success in the rotablation group um, uh, but there is no uh, uh, mortality benefit. The major cardiac events were uh, similar. The definite thromb thrombosis was similar. Target lesion revascularization was similar. Uh, in fact, the late, uh, lum late lumen loss was actually higher in the rotablation uh, group, and this is something we could discuss, and uh, you could argue about the uh, type of stent that was used. Uh, the prepare calc trial, the randomized patient with heavily calcified lesions uh, into uh, rotational atherectomy versus um, um, uh, 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 cutting and scoring balloons and serolimus drug alluring stents, randomized patient 100 patients to the uh, cutting and scoring balloon with heavily calcified uh, 
compared with the uh, uh, rotation atherectomy group 100 patients. And the uh, rotation atherectomy was superior in terms of success, but the outcomes were similar in the both uh, groups. We have orbital atherectomy also device. Um, Dr. DiMario spoke about it and has a good uh, uh, video about it. it uh, it's a um, 1.25 millimeter crown. It allows you to do an ablation anti-grade and uh, also retrograde motion. Uh, you could use 80,000 RPMs or 120,000 RPMs. You could, um, and it's one size and there's no interpretation in blood during uh, crown um, uh, orbital atherectomy and less vascular heating. Uh, there is an ongoing trial, Eclipse trial, that will be published next year. Uh, the randomized patient uh, with severe calcified uh, arteries, uh, orbital atherectomy versus conventional angioplasty. Um, they were going to randomize 2,000 patients. The results are going to come out next year. Uh, outcomes are acute minimal stent area measured by OCT and target vessel uh, failure. Uh, which is a composite of cardiac death, target uh, vessel-related myocardial infarction, ischemic driven target vessel revascularization. And this is a 55 years old uh, gentleman who had a CT done at outside hospital that shows too, uh, severe to vessel coronary artery disease. And uh, he does have severe stenosis in the proxta mid LAD that's heavily calcified, performed IVUS imaging. There was 180 degrees calcium. Uh, and we um, placed a viper wire and distal LAD. This is the orbital atherectomy. We did multiple runs of orbital atherectomy from the proximal to the mid LAD. And this is the balloon angioplasty post orbital atherectomy and successful stent placement. And that was well expanded. Um, the other tool that we could use is laser um, atherectomy, um, a main mechanism, which is a photochemical and phototherm and photomechanical. Uh, you use saline uh, contrast of blood, but be careful about uh, contrast because that's uh, off label and it can um, um, uh, release and expand uh, bubbles that uh, press over the plaque with the procedure success uh, of 93%. We have also balloon-based techniques, cutting and scoring balloons. The cutting balloons had three micro blades uh, with a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio with the vessel diameter, but the global trial failed to show any superiority of the uh, cutting balloon for type A and B lesions compared with the standard balloon angioplasty. What about super higher pressure balloons? Uh, it has a rapid exchange and compliant balloon. You could go up to 35 to 40 atmosphere. It does not burst. And you could use it before and after stent uh, implantation. Lithotripsy balloon is another technology that's, uh, I think, um, um, is very, it's going to become more popular. Um, you could p p place a balloon and inflate to four atmosphere and, and perform shock waves that burst into the uh, plaque. And it's very helpful in uh, use of uh, heavily calcified uh, lesions and deep calcium. So give me one minute, Alan. One minute, please. Okay. Can I have the last slide, please? Okay. Your last slide. Okay. So we, it comes in different balloons from 2.5 uh, up to 4 millimeter balloons, uh, OCT images of um, um, successful um, lithotripsy uh, pre and post, uh, multiple uh, uh, trials that uh, showed the efficacy and safety of the use of shockwave balloon. So the algorithm um, um, to, to, to use in a heavily calcified lesion, if you have a balloon that crosses, uh, you could pre-dilate with a small balloon. Uh, use intravascular imaging, OCT or IVUS, it depends on the case. Uh, if there is a prediction of uh, high calcium burden um, and the decision was made to, then we proceed with um, um, uh, atherectomy. If there is deep calcium, then the, the way to go is lithotripsy. If there is no deep calcium, you could use rotational atherectomy or orbital atherectomy and then optimum balloon expansion. If there is no high calcium burden, you just use an uncompliant balloon. And after that, you could use a cutting or scoring balloon and then proceed with, uh, with balloon uh, angioplasty. If uh, the wire passed and there is no uh, balloon that could cross, uh, then you, the way to go is rotational atherectomy, orbital atherectomy, and you go from there to proceed with PCI. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Can you leave the last yeah. slide, please? Excuse me. Can you leave the algorithm here? Yeah. Okay, last slide, the algorithm here to discuss. Andrea. You have, you have. Yeah. We need your opinion about the algorithm, what you do for uh, in general for a calcified lesion? What we do in general? Um, yeah. Well, Last we, we follow the algorithm. We, if it's, if it's heavily calcified, uh, we image and uh, we go according to uh, whether there is a circular arch, whether it's circumferential. The load of calcium is, is important as well to choose. Uh, and then we go about our business as, as usual. We either do a rotational atherectomy if we feel that the 
burr will grip into the calcium, i.e. if we have a circular uh, situation. If it's eccentric, as Carlo has shown in, in beautiful pictures, uh, then we might attempt a shockwave. Um, and uh, yeah. I see. All right. And the rest is pressure, right? Oh, thank, you. thank you. For the sake of the time, we will go next. Thanks, better for the great lecture. Thank you. We'll move to the next uh, um, um, uh, talk. Yep. Go ahead, Ryan. So, um